Okay, today we're going to start Kuflam uh, Tchesim Beis. If you have a regular Gemara, it's one thirty-eight B, and it's three lines from the wide lines. Tana Rabbanan. The Rabbi is turning a brisa. Kishenich Nasu Rabbi Seino Lekaren BeYavna. When the sages entered into the vineyard of Yavna. Uh, the historians like to discuss this Gemara. Um, why was the yeshiva in Yavna called Kerem B'Yavna? Today there's a yeshiva called Kerem B'Yavna. Um, why was it called a vineyard? Either because the rows of a vineyard were similar to the rows in the yeshiva, um, or the yeshiva was actually held in some sort of vineyard. Uh, when the sages went there, because they, they had to, they, there was... This is by the destruction. So after the destruction, they were exiled. So they went from one place to another, 10 different stops, 10 different places, the Sanhedrin went. So Amru, they said then, the Torah is going to be forgotten. As it says in the Pasuk, days are coming, right? It's hard to read this without thinking uh, the Shlomo song. Um, uh, says Hashem, Vishlachti Rav Baretz, and I will send a famine into the land. Lay Rav Lechem, not a, a famine for bread, light some of not hunger for bread, not thirst for water. Kim Lishmeyas Tibre Hashem, just to hear the word of God. That's going to be what the thirst is going to be. Not for bread, but to hear Tyra. So that means that the terror will be forgotten. People are going to be searching for terror. They won't be able to find it. Uksiv, no miyamad yam. It says they'll wander from sea to sea. Mitzafin, from the north, Vad Mizrach, to the east. Yeshaitetu, which means they'll swim. Levakesh, es dvar Hashem v'le To seek the, the word of God and they won't find it. So we mentioned over here dvar Hashem. They're seeking the word of God. So. The, Gemara explains, Tvar Hashem zu halacha. Tvar Hashem is referring to the actual law. Tvar Hashem is Tvar Hashem is the end of time. Um, Rashi says, interesting, he says, Le yadana He says he doesn't know where he gets this from. When, when it said zu halacha, Rashi quoted a, a pasuk, Lahagad lachem is Tvar Hashem. He says he doesn't know where the Gemara learns this from that this means that they're going to be seeking what the end of time is. Now, Taisvis does have a source. Taisvis does have a source for it. Tvar Hashem Zunavua. They're seeking prophecy. What does it mean they're going to be, what does Yishaita to mean, like to float? Um, be roaming to, uh, to seek the word of God. Amra, they explain like this. A woman will take a loaf of bread of truma. She'll go around. Truma is the, is the gift that was given to the Kohen. That needs to be eaten pure. It was taken from uh, 2% of the grain. It was given to the Kohen. It needs to be eaten in purity. She's going to go around to the shoals. Lay them to me, even Tere. He's going to ask, is this pure? Is it not pure? If it's pure, she's allowed to eat it. The um, Ain Maven, and no one's going to know. Avatumahi, I'm sorry, mine says Av. That's a mistake. It's missing uh, the line on the Mem. Im Tmeyahi, Im Tahirahi, Vim Tmeyahi. If it's uh, pure, if it's not pure. That's what she's going to be asking. Is the bread pure? No one's going to know. The Gemara says, one second. Purity. What's the problem? It, it, this is Psukim. In Tereshe I mean, the Bible is going, to be, is going to be around. It's not talking about tradition that people will forget. You open up the Pasuk. It says, Pasuk says that uh, bread could become impure. It depends if it touches this, touches that. It says clearly in the Torah. So, El Aleida, the Gemara answers, Imri Shainahivim Shniahivim Maven. 
wants to know what type of tum it is. Is it a recent latum? Is it a shani latum? Those are complicated halachas. Um, you see, the way it works is that there's levels of impurity. The, the first thing would be like, let's say, uh, a corpse. Uh, and, then, and then it could be, let's say, you know, a dead um, creature, a sheret. And then things that touch that, and then things that touch what touches it. So it works in stages. The Rishan would be something that touched the sherets. A Shani would be something that touched what touched the sherets. It's, it's a step removed. The Gemara says, one second, Hanami Masnisani, that's a Mishnah. I guess we're assuming that the Mishnah was written. Kedetnan, Kerem Biyavna, the Mishnah wasn't written. Kerem Biyavna sounds like Rabbi Echim and Zaka's days. No. Kedetnan Asheretz Shenimtza Betanur Hapasha Besecha Shnia Shatanur Tchila. It says clearly, bread that's in an oven. Now, an oven is a is a ceramic, um, a clay uh, utensil, earthenware utensil. And the way earthenware works is that it only becomes tame from something that's inside it. So if there's a sheretz, uh, this impure dead creature that's inside it, so that when the bread goes into it, then that airspace was tummy, now the bread becomes tummy. So the sheretz is, of course, the abatama. The airspace in the oven becomes tummy as a rishan, and the bread that's in it becomes a shani. Shatana trila, because the taner is the rishan. Trila means it's a rishan. So we see, we have a, we know if it's tummy or not. It says clearly in the Mishnah. The Gemara explains, Mistaf Kalahu, they had a question, or they will have a question. Ravada Barava Larava. No, it's a deeper question. Ravada Barava asked Rava, Lechse Haitanura command the Malay Tumma, but have you passed your Shaina? Very interesting question. It says, look, there's a Sheretz in there. The sheretz fills up the, the tuma, the impurity spreads out throughout the entire, um, er, the entire area of, of the oven. So all of that area becomes a rishon. Now there's bread in there as well. So shouldn't I say that the bread should be a rishon as well because the bread is inside that, that area? And so that was Ravada Barab's question. Now you don't know. It's a good question. Um, is it a uh, is it a Rishan or is it a Shani? Okay, so things won't be so bad. I mean, that's a Lamdisha question. So We don't say that. That was his response. We don't say that it's filled up. We say that it's a step removed. The airspace becomes tummy, and the airspace makes the bread tummy. The Tanya's was taught in a brisa. Yachol you kolakelim mitam babir klicheres. See, it's very interesting. Um, there's impurity can spread to food for more steps removed than it can to utensils. So, in other words, food could become a shani. This is the avatam, the father, the first step, the second step. But the food could reach the second step. Utensils stop at the first step. They can't become a shani. So we ask like this. If there's a utensil that's inside the earthenware oven, so and there's a sheritz there, so will the utensil become tummy? It says, I could have thought that utensils will become tummy. It says, the pasuk continues, or it's the following pasuk, I think. That anything that's in it will become tame from all. And you read if you read the two pesukim with ignoring the period, the seif pasuk, you'll you'll it'll say anything that's in it will become tame from all the food that's that could be eaten. So it's only food that becomes tame there. Uh-huh. Aha. Okay, so that's his explanation of the answer that the food doesn't become a rishon, the food becomes a sheni. And we see that from the fact that utensils don't become tummy in a klicheres, because utensils can't be a shani. Utensils can only be a rishon. Okay. 
Tanya Reb Shimon ben Yichai Yomer. Started in a brayser. Reb Shimon ben Yichai says, "Chas v'shalom shet eshtakach terem Yisrael." God forbid that the terror will be forgotten. Shenemar kile tishta tishkach mi pizare. It will never be forgotten from your descendant. What about the Pasuk? It says people will seek the word of God. They won't find it. It means it's going to be forgotten. It explains You won't be able to find a clear halacha, a clear Mishnah in one place. That's This is probably where the title of the Mishnah Bura comes from. Mishnah Bura. Um, Why? Rashi says, because there's always going to be machlekas. Makes things very confusing. Sometimes you go to the rabbi. So as well, there's different opinions. It's, you know, it's very hard. There's no, no clarity. Okay, Tanya, Rabbi Yesi ben Elisha, Imer. And Rabbi Yesi ben Elisha says, dar You see a generation that there's many many suffering, a lot of many, much suffering. Say you you have to look at the judges. All trouble that comes to the world, all punishments comes because of the judges. Shinemar, as it says in the Pasuk, Shimona Zais Rashi Beis Yaakov, the Katsini Beis Yisrael, Hamasav Mishpat. Listen to this, the heads of the house of Yaakov, the rulers, the house of Yisrael, Hamasav and Mishpat, that detest justice. As Kola Yeshara Yakshu, and everything that's straight, they make crooked. Bidamim, they build Tsiyan with blood, Yushalayim Ba'avla, and Yushalayim with like uh, iniquity, Avla, sin. The heads judge with bribery. The Kayanim, who are the teachers? The Kayanim, they teach, as they give the Psak Halacha for pay. Means if you, depending on what you pay them, that's the Psak that you'll get. And the prophets, will give prophecy for, for a fee. Dr. this man, I don't know if you should put up any pictures. It's not the best. <laughs> it's not, uh, <laughs> is that to the Gemara you're referring to? I don't know. Um, Hashem Yishanu. It's very interesting. Now it says, um, but they we rely on Hashem. So interesting. They say, that, um, but uh, and Hashem is, uh, Hashem is taking care of us. They're wicked, but they still they, they still have trust in Hashem. So maybe a Kadosh Baruch Hu Gimel Pranius connected Gimel Aver should be other. If you go back um, and you look at that pasuk, there were three. It, it itemized three sins. They, they, um, the the judges, the Reshaha judge, they take bribes for bribery, the Kayanim Paskin for a price, and the prophets um, will prophesize for, for a price, for money. So because of that, there'll be three punishments. Because of you, Tzien will be plowed over like a field. Yushalayim Ayin How they translate ayin? Iyin is like little islands. Little, oh, little is that what it is? Is that how they do it? The, the, it's iyin, not ayin. Yeah. Yeshiva yeah. Bachim don't know Tanakh. This is from Micha, it says, right? This is islands. Okay, Vahara Bayas Laba Mesiar. Iyim also means Kharabas. I mean it's like the oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Art, Art Scroll says heaps of ruins. 
One yes. second, I don't hear. Tell me again. Heaps of ruins. Right. Heaps of ruins. Okay, so that would be uh, that would be what it is. Okay. Baharabayas Labamis Yar. And the Temple Mount will be like uh, the high places of the forest. Do we have it matched up here? Exactly. You know what it reminds me of? You know, uh, when you go to the beach and there's like a temporary island. Uh -huh. called that, like a sun island. What is it called? It's like sand, like a sand island. Right. Okay, uh -huh. that's all. Uh, Maybe that's what it's well. like. Uh, like there's nothing there. Right, it's just there right now, but it'll disappear later. Uh -huh. So you could go enjoy the, okay. I'll mute. So, um, I'm not sure if we can if we can match this up exactly which one corresponds to which, but I assume I don't know which one would be the Nevian. Okay, Beina Kadosh Baruch Hu Masha Shchinasai Al Yisrael Ad Shiyichlu Shaytim Shaytim Ram Yisrael. Hashem is not going to bring His Shchina, His presence, back to the Jewish people until they get rid of the, the wicked judges and the wicked uh, officials. Sh the shaitrim are the sheriffs. They carry out the, um, the, 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 the judgment. Shnema vashiva yade alayach, I will return my hand to you. Vetsrif kabar sigayach, I guess. I will um, refine you. Kabor, kavor, kavor is like the soap or um, sigaych is your dregs. Basira kol bedilayach. That's I will remove your alloys. That's you know the other other types of metals that are there. Vashiva shivtayach kvarishen v'yatzach katfila. That we're familiar with. I will return your judges as originally, and the council as it was originally. So Amar Ula, Ula says, "Ein Yerushalayim niftela b'tzdaka." There's a little bit of a problem here because let's take a look at this. Shenem matzian b'mishpati pade v'shavei b'tzdaka. On the sign they say, "Ein Yisrael niftela b'tzdaka." The Jew, the the. The Jewish people will only be redeemed with charity. See, Yerushalayim had an issue with the judges, with judgment, not charity. That wasn't the, that wasn't the issue. So that's why I think that it's corrected here. Yerushalayim will be redeemed with with just with uh, with justice. Tzion, Tzion will be redeemed with justice. Not to have corrupt, uh, corrupt uh, judgment or judges, and the and Israel will be redeemed. The Jewish people will will be redeemed with charity. Amar of Papa, Rav Papa, Rav Papa says, "E batli yehiri." If the yehiri means arrogant, Rashi adds in these interesting things. He says people that go around with. Um, Nice uh, haired styles and uh, ostentatious clothing. If that will stop, then bat that sounds, like, so, that sounds like me. <laughs> but but there's a reason for it. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's important. Okay, it's a ploy. Okay, sorry, sorry. Bye. So batli amgushi, then the heretics will stop also. What's the connection? I guess. Um, the heretics are on the outside are, are on the outside that cause us uh, trouble. So if we stop certain things on the inside, then we'll then the certain types of oppression will stop. E batli dayani, if the judges will stop the wicked judges that we spoke about before, the corrupt judges, then batli gizirf gizirfiti. Then the gazirtafi, which is the officials that the the wicked officials that cause us trouble, will also stop. So the Gemara explains. Let's go, goes back to explain. Ibatli yehiri, 
if these people that act ostentatiously, that stops the Batli Gushi, then the heretics that cause us trouble will also stop the Ksiv Etrif Kabar I will clear, I will refine like, uh, like soap, like with soap. Sigayach, before Sigayach, we translated as dregs. Now we're translating Sigayach as Gasi Aruach, like Gas, Sig, Gas. Um, so that's the source that to protect us from the heretics is to stop being uh, ostentatious. Ibatli Dayane, Batli Gezirfiti, if the corrupt judges will stop, will go away. Then it will stop the oppression from these wicked officials. Hashem will turn away. Hashem will remove, I guess. Your, your um, judges. Your enemies will turn away. I guess uh, if when the judges stop, then the people that carry out other judgments will also stop. Amr Rab Mulai, Mishum, Rabbi Loza Bar Shimon. Rabbi Mulai says the name of Rabbi Loza Bar Shimon. We're going to have Rabbi Mulai several times. It may not be connected other than with Rabbi Mulai. Maidiksiv, that's an abbreviation. Maidiksiv, Memdal. What's the meaning of the following Pasuk? Shavar Hashem Mati Rishoim Shevet Maishlam. Hashem will break the staff of the wicked, the, the, the rod of the wicked, the, the staff or the rod of the rulers. Shavar Hashem Mati Rishoim, Hashem will break the staff of the wicked, Elo Adayanim. These are the judges, Shnasu Maka Lechazaneim. They're actually a staff for their own um, sheriffs, chazan is like a shamash. You see, the judges have to pay the um, the office uh, <laughs> office staff, the people that take care. They have to pay the police. They have to keep that in place. So therefore, they have to charge. They have to, they collect more payment for their judgments to keep their office staff in place, to keep the, uh, the sheriffs. Uh, uh. So it turns out that the judges are working for their sheriffs, not for, not for the, uh, not the other way around. Because they, they have to keep their, the, the livelihood of the people that they, uh, that, that, that they pay. So Shevet Maishlim, what, what are the Shevet Maishlim? So in other words, Mate Rishoyim, who's the Mate Rishoyim? The Rishoyim would be the sheriffs and the, and the Mate, their staff is, are the judges. Hashem will break those, break those judges. Shevet Maishlim, who is the, the rod of the rulers? El Talmide Chacham Shebe Mishpachai Sadayanim. These are the Torah sages that are, that are family members of the judges and they get endorsement from, from the family members. So they become the staff for, of, the, uh, of the judges. That means they become the strength They protect them. Marzutra Amar El Talmid Chacham Shem Lam De Salachis Tzibur LeDayani Bar. Marzutra says these are the Talmid Chachamim that teach Halachis Tzibur. I think the Halachis Tzibur means the Halachas that the community is going to recognize. So the, to the to the um, ignorant judges, so that they should look like they are knowledgeable in front of the in front of the people. They teach him just enough so that they should appear knowledgeable. Amar Rabbi Lazar ben Malai. Aha. Before we had Rabbi Malai. Mishum Rish Lakish. My Siv, what's the. Is, it, is that Rish Lakish? I, don't, I have it in an abbreviation. Does anyone have it spelled out? Could be Reb Levi, I don't know. 
מה ידע כסיב? מה זה מינינג על הפסוק? כי כפיכם נגולו בדם. Your hands become dirty with blood. וצפייסיכם באבוין. And your fingers with sin. ספסייסיכם דיבר שקר. Your lips speak falsehood. לשייניכם אבלה תגה. And your tongues talk um, iniquity. Okay, now we go back to explain this pasuk. This is a pasuk in Yeshaya. Your hands are dirty with blood. These are the judges. Why are they dirty with blood? Rashi explains interesting. They take bribes. After they take the bribes, then they paskin, they make rulings um, for the wrong side because they were just bribed. Now, if you take money from one person that uh, wasn't rightfully so, so that's like taking his blood. He worked for that money. Damim taiti mashma, right? Damim money has two meanings. It has the word blood in there. People get, uh, they, they uh, sacrifice their life. They're in a livelihood. So when you take money, uh, not rightfully so, so then the, the hands get filled with blood. What about the fingers with sin? These are the scribes. They write the documents for those judges. So that's their fingers. They're writing all these, uh, all these forms and documents for the verdicts. In their lips speak falsehood. These are the lawyers. They tell the people um, what to claim. They tell them, they, they tell them to lie. These are the litigants that they speak falsehood. Rabbi says in the name of Rabbi Yitzchak Magdalam, Yem Shapir's Yosef Miachav Leitam Tam Yayin. From the day that Yosef was separated from his brothers, he did not drink any wine. And the crown was the crown of the, over his brothers. Um, over here, it's, it, we're translating Nazir not as a crown, but as a, a Nazir. And on his head is the crown of his brothers, not a, not the, um, um, it means that a Nazar, a Nazar doesn't drink wine. So Yosef didn't drink wine. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Bar Chanina, Tam Mutam Yain, they also didn't drink wine. The Ksiv, as it says in the Pasuk, the Yishtu, the Yishkurimai, it says at that time when Yosef made a meal for them that they drank together. And Michal Dadi that means that they didn't they, they didn't drink all of that time before that. It was the first time they drank. The Idach, what does Rabbi Yitzchak Magdala hold? He only said that Yosef didn't drink wine. He says, Shikr Sudalehava, they never got drunk. Doesn't mean they didn't drink wine. They drink wine, they just didn't get drunk. Shasiya Miyahava, but they did drink wine. Okay. This is um, Hashem tells uh, Maisha that when he goes back to take the people out of Mitzrayim, it says Aaron will see you and he'll be happy. So the fact that Aaron was happy for his brother, that's what they didn't have jealousy. So that's what uh, made him deserving of the of the uh, the chayshin. What's the connection of the chayshin? I think it's the gladness of the heart that it, the chayshin goes over the heart that he was happy for someone else. I think that's. I mean, that's why I learned it. Pashtas. Do you have a, another thought, Chaim? Uh, no, no. Just asking. Maybe I know the chayshen has to do with judgment also. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't look at them in the fashion. Okay. Sholcholei b'nei baschar lelevi. The people of baschar. 
sent to Levi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this name of the city right. They sent to Levi. Kila mao, kashusa bekarma mao, mes biyamtif mao. They sent him three questions. They sent him, what about a kila? This takes us back to our parak. Are you allowed to set up a canopy on, on Shabbos, a canopy over a bed? We learned that there's uh, all types of conditions of what makes something an oil. Um, it has to be permanent. And there needs to be, um, the usage needs to be under it. Uh, there used to be a tefach, right? We, we had all of these, um, all of these things was another condition. Um, what's the other condition? Oh, mechitzas. Has to have mechitzas. Um, not just the top, not just the roof. So you know, to be a real oil, you know, there's a bunch of conditions. So they're asking, what about setting up this canopy over a bed? Kishusa bekarma mahu. Are you allowed to grow hops in a vineyard? Now, um, you're, not, you're not allowed to grow uh, vegetables in a vineyard. The, they'll get nourishment, the, the, the soft roots of the vegetables and the, and the roots of the grapevines will, will, um, will get nourishment from each other. Trees in a vineyard is a different story. The hard roots from each, they won't give nourishment to each other. But, um, but vegetables is a problem. The Gemara's question over here, well, B'nai Paschar, their question is, hops is more of a bush than a tree, and it's more of a bush than a vegetable. So uh, a bush is like somewhere in the middle. Is a bush a tree? Is a bush a vegetable? So that's the question. If it's a vegetable, it's us. If it's a tree, it's mother. The problem is kalayim, forbidden mixtures in the vineyard. What about if someone passes away on a holiday? Um, are you able to bury him? So at the Ozel, while the messenger was going, Nach Nafshe the Levi, Levi passed away. So Amar Shmuel, or Rav Menashe, Shmuel says to Rav Menashe, if you're wise, so Shalachlu, you respond. If you know the answers, respond. They sent the question to Levi, but go ahead. Shalach Lehu, he sent back Kila regarding the canopy, Chazarno al Kaltside Kila Vle Matsanal Atzad Hata. There's no, nothing that's permissible. There's no way of doing a Kila, of setting up a canopy over a bed. So I don't know if the Gemara is asking or Shmuel is asking him. Why didn't he tell them that Rami Baryechezkel, <coughs> Rami Baryechezkel, excuse me, says that it's allowed? Rami Baryechezkel said, that if you open it up, the canopy, one tefach, then you're allowed to stretch it the rest of the way. You're allowed to be moisif on an oil. Once the oil is there, you're allowed to extend it, like we do with the shlak on, over a sukkah, or, a, um, or a, the, the covering over a stroller. That once it's opened a little bit, you're allowed to pull it the rest of the way. So why did he, told, why did he tell him that it was us? There's a solution. You spread it out a little bit, and you, you put a snap on it. You tie it up, and so and then on, on uh, Shabbos you can spread it out. It says Lefishen and Torah. When it comes to giving um, leniencies, heterim, so you have to be careful that the people will understand that this is a heter because of these conditions. Otherwise, they'll just say, "Yeah, the rabbi said it's okay, so it's not a problem." They'll end up doing it even when those conditions aren't met. So he didn't want to tell them that. Kishusa, they, they, they would say um, that uh, the, the, the Rebetzin would say, uh, don't let the rabbi into the kitchen. I'll trafe everything up. So <laughs> he knows the halachas, but the women have to keep it uh, separately. You know, they do it more with all the chumras. Because that's how they were learned. They were taught. He says, you know, you don't put anything on that counter or whatever, even though it could be in Shulchan Aruch, there's, uh, you could find that it's really not us. But you, know, you separate things that you shouldn't come to think that this is okay in, in other cases. Kshusa Bekarma Irvuvya. Then he tells him that haps in the, um, in the vineyard, Irvuvya means kalayim. It's a, it's a mixture. It's a forbidden mixture. So Gemara asks, 
Why doesn't he say what Reb Tarfin says? The Tanya Kishas Reb Tarfin Amir in Kalayim Bekerem. It's not. It's not considered a forbidden mixture. Hops in a vineyard. The Chacham Amir Kalayim Bekerem. The Chacham say that it's Kalayim. The Gemara right away says that. Well, maybe it's passing like the like the Chacham. The Gemara says no. That's not an issue because the Kaimel and Kalam Mekel Bar. It's Allah Kmeisa Bechuslers. We have an interesting Allah that whenever there's a machlekes regarding this law, when it is in its biblical state, the biblical state in its uh, original halacha, which is um, either arla or kalayim, arla is the, the, the first three years of a tree that the fruits are forbidden, or kalayim, which really only applies originally in the land of Israel. Outside the land of Israel, it's halacha or it's, it's a second there. It's one step away. So the rule is, is that if there's any reason to be lenient, we're lenient outside the land of Israel. Now, what's the reason to be lenient? Well, if there's a machleikas in Eretz Yisrael, then one, is, one opinion is lenient. Then outside the land of Israel, you can accept that opinion. So that applies to Arlen and it also applies to Kalayim. So look, we have a machlekes in Eretz Yisrael, a machlekes chamem Reb Tarfin. Reb Tarfin says you could be lenient. Even in Israel, you could be lenient, according to Reb Tarfin, which means outside the land of Israel, that's the halacha. Why didn't he, why didn't he tell him that? Fishen and B'nai Taira. They're not B'nai Taira. They won't understand to make a difference between Chutz Laret and Eretz Yisrael. Maybe one of them will move to Eretz Yisrael. Apparently... Um, <clears throat> Baschar is, uh, is outside the land of Israel. Okay. Um, Machriz Rav Hai Mandabai Lemizr Kshusa Bekarma Lizra. I'm sorry, not, not Rav Hai. Machriz Rav. Rav made an announcement. Hai Man, this person. Rav made an announcement. This person. The boy Lemizra Kshusa that he wants to plant hops in a vineyard, Lizra, he could plant it. Why? Because Rav was in Bavel. Rav was in Surah in, uh, in the south. Um, Rav Amram Chasida Manged Ilave. Rav Amram Chasida Manged, that means gave lashes, I think. <clears throat> and someone that does this. Why? I Reb Tarfin. So Taisra says that it must have been that in his place they weren't B'nai Taira. And he was afraid that they would extend it even to Eretz Yisrael. Reb Masharshi of Leprutal Latinic, Nachri Vizarale. Reb Masharshi wouldn't do this directly. He gave a coin to a non Jewish child to plant the hops in the vineyard. He didn't want to do it directly. The Gemara asks, Yisrael, why can't he give it to a Jewish child to do it? It's not Mechayiv B'mitzvah. This is a source for very interesting uh, things about having children do, do uh, prohibited activity. The Gemara says, Asila Misrach. When he grows up, he may end up continuing to do that. So you don't want to do that. They'll say, oh yeah, Mesharshia would have me do this. Sure, it's not a problem. Why do you have to give it to a non-Jewish child? You can give it to a, an adult. A non-Jewish adult, what's the difference? Why a non-Jewish child? That was a concern that you may give it to a Jewish person to do. An adult. I guess a non-Jewish child, you may give it to a Jewish child. Okay, that's a step removed. So, But to give it to an adult to, to do, you may, you may think that Rabbi Masharshia did that in his um, vineyard, so we're allowed to do that. Okay, what about the mace? His last question. If someone passes away on Yom Tov. Shalach Lehu, Rabbi Menashe responded to this, B'nai Baschar, Mace, lay is askable, lay yudin, lay yarmon, lay be Yom Tov, reason, lay be Yom Tov, sheni. If someone passes away on Yom Tov, you should not uh, do the funeral not Jewish people, not, not Jewish people, not if it's the first day Yom Tif, not if it's the second day Yom Tif. Eini, is that really so? Is that the halacha? Vam Rav Yehuda Bar Shelesa Maravasi. Rav Yehuda Bar Shelesa says, Nehmev Ravasi. Uv da havi bebeis kenishta de ma'ayin. We have an incident in the, the synagogue, in the place called ma'ayin. Yom Tif asamach l'shabbas. 
it was a holiday that was next to Shabbos. That meant that there were two days there. We don't know if it was the Yom Tov was on Friday or the Yom Tov was on Sunday. Whatever it was, there were two days there. Which means that if someone, if someone passed away, there would be two days that would go without the body being buried. They came to Rabbi Yechanan. Said, let the non Jews do the burial. So, why didn't he, why did he tell them you can't do a burial? If it's, if it's two days, you definitely can do a burial. Vama Rava, Rava says, Mace be Yamtiv Rishan. If he passed away on the first day of Yamtiv. So, Yasaska by Amamim. On the first day of it's more strict. You get a non-Jew to do the, do the digging. Yom Tov Sheini, Yisaskaba Yisrael. If it's on the second day, it's more lenient. Second day of Yom Tov is more lenient. It's really like Cholomayid, but we keep it strict because of the, the question that we had with the calendar back then. We still keep it. But nevertheless, when it comes to this, you can have a, a, a Jewish person do the digging. Even Yom Tov Shein of Rosh Hashanah, which has stringencies, because the two days of Rosh Hashanah is kept even in the land of Israel, not like the other holidays. So Mashen Kim which we're not lenient when it comes to an egg that's laying on, on Yom Tov. On the second day Yom Tov, we could be lenient, but not the second day Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. We consider it like one day. In other words, um, on other days... The question is, when was the egg uh, completed? It's laying the, the day after it's completed. So uh, um, if, it's the, if it was the first day, first day was Yom Tif, then now it's not Yom Tif. If it's second day Yom Tif, then it was completed the first day Yom Tif. So there was, there was some, uh, some leniencies there. But back to our question, why didn't he tell them that they can, it's possible to do a burial? The answer is of Yishen Ibn Same issue, that there has to be strict because they may confuse things. Rashi over here said, Rashi has a Chumra here. Rashi says, when Rabbi says that on the first day Yom Tif, the, uh, a non-Jew can do it, on the second day Yom Tif, a Jew, Rashi says that the first day Yom Tif means that there was a Shabbos before that. So there's going to be two days that go by without the burial. That's why. Let's say not. Let's say it's just one day. Rashi is saying that he died on Shabbos. The Gemara doesn't seem to say that. But um, anyway, it's Rashi's opinion. Amar of Oven, I mean, it doesn't, I don't have to learn the Gemara like that. I could have read the Gemara differently. Amar Rav Oven Bar Rav Huna, Amar Rav Chama Bar Gurya. Rav Oven Bar Rav Huna says in the name of Rav Chama Bar Gurya, I think Rav Chama Bar Gurya was a student of Rav. He says, Mesatef Adam Bekila, Ubekas Kasea, Yetzel Shusram Beshabbes, Vena Chayshes. A person can wrap himself up in a canopy. Um, a canopy just means it's a, it's a sheet. He can wrap himself up in a sheet and he can walk outside. It's not a problem, it's his clothing. It, uh, it's like an Indian style uh, clothing, it's no problem. The Gumar asks, one second, there's one detail there that we're missing. There's a problem with that canopy because the canopy has these little straps that come off that are used to tie it. Now, granted, the whole sheet that, you, that the person's wearing is fine, it's a sheet. He, he wraps himself in a sheet. That's how they would dress. But what about those straps that he doesn't use? Those straps are hanging off. That he's, that's not part of the clothing. That's just carrying. If someone wears a talus on Shabbos, but the tzitzis are puzzled, so the talus, it was no problem for him to wear. Yeah, it's a problem to wear a talus without tzitzis. But there's no chatas for that. It's a, you're neglecting a positive command. 
to put tzitzis on the talis, on the four covered garments. So, okay, there's a neglect of a mitzvah. But here, he did a negative prohibition as well. He carried. He violated the Shabbos. He ca- what did he carry? Not the talis. He carried the tzitzis that are hanging off the talis. That's not considered a garment. If the tzitzis are kosher, then the tzitzis are, are part of the garment. But if the tzitzis are not kosher, then they're useless. And he just carried them uh, for no reason. So why are you allowed to wear the canopy with the straps hanging off? The straps are useless. The straps aren't the garment. Very interesting question. The Gemara answers. Tzitzis l'gabi talis chashivi v'leibatli. When it comes to the tzitzis, they're important. So they're not bottle. Hani le chashivi v'batli. But these are important. I'm sorry, the opposite. The tzitzis are important. These, these straps are not important in their bottle. Uh, so Rashi says, why are the tzitzis important? It sounds like they're expensive because the tzitzis have trellis. The trellis makes them important. Words, you could reuse those strings, at least the trellis. You're not throwing them out. You're not like, you say, yeah, I cut it off. You, you want to you keep it. So therefore, it's considered like you carried it. However, these straps, if you're not going to use it for the canopy, you just cut it off. It's not a big deal. You know, sometimes on a, um, a jacket has on the inside, has a little, um, like a label or a hook, a thing that you could use to hang it over a hook. So if it's hanging, if it, one side comes off, because you used it once on a hook and you took it off and it broke. So, so then what about that little, little piece that's hanging? Is that carrying? Probably not. It's probably bottle. Unless you're planning on sewing it back on. If you're planning on sewing it back on, it gets worse. If you don't care about it, then it's nothing. That may have to do with the buttons. You know, on the bottom of a shirt, there's these buttons there. That they, in case you lose a button, you, you, those buttons are there for extra. Is that carrying? So the machmirim always cut it off extra buttons that you may be, you're saving them for something and you just stop carrying them. For the, they don't, they have no usage. They have no buttonhole until you sew it onto the place. Okay. Um, and that's the discussion here. Amar Rabba Barafuna, it's the Aleph. Take out the Rabba. Really? Oh, Amar of Oven. Is it supposed to be Bar of Huna? Amar of Oven? Maybe it's just Rav Oven. Mara Madam Allah Mishmaris Mishmaris beyond of Litus by Remain of a Tale of Very interesting. We had a discussion earlier if you're allowed to put up a strainer over a utensil. Um, we said that Rebbe Leza said on Yom Tov, yes. Um, and the Chum said, you're not allowed to put it up on Yom Tov, put up the strainer. It was considered like a tent. That's how we started off originally. However, then the Gemara said, really? It's like a tent? It's not a tent. Um, Abaya says it's only Yesed Rabbanon. Elam Rabbaya Mid Rabbanon Shle Yasek Der Shesu Rabbanon to put that up because it's uvdin dechal, you may come to do bayer, so we don't want you to put it up. That's what we said before. Comes along Rav Avin or Rav Baravuna, and he says that there's a, a little trick that you can do. Let's say the issue was that you may come to do straining. You may come to do straining if you put this up. So you can put it up, stretch a cloth over a top, over a top of a uh, container, and you fill it up with pomegranates. Pomegranates, you're not doing any straining. It's just a place to hold your, uh, hold your fruits. I don't know why you don't want to put it all the way in the bottom of the barrel, but whatever. Maybe you need a second layer for some reason. So um, you're allowed to do that as long as you then put the pomegranates in it. So it's a trick. You put the pomegranates in it, so you're allowed to set it up. And then afterwards, you put the dregs of the wine in it after you take the pomegranates out, and then you can use it as a strainer. 
because even the Chachamim said that you're allowed to use it as a strainer, right? You weren't allowed to set it up. Have a nice and little, once it's set up, you're allowed to use it. So it's a trick. This is, these tricks are called harama. It's a, it's a trick. Maybe this has to do with the last Gemara about the judges that do it. That, yeah, it says, here it says you're allowed to. So Maish Amar Ravashi. Who did tell about remind him? That's only if you actually put the pomegranates in it first. What's the difference from what it says? You're allowed to make beer. On mayad, I think means chalamayad. For chalamayad. For yamtiv. But if it's not for the for the yamtiv, it's not for the chalamayad, it's not for right then, then it's forbidden. Whether it's beer that's made from date honey, date, or if it's made from barley, barley malt. Um, so then it's allowed. And even if you already have beer, you don't need this beer. You're making it for after yamtiv. What you do is you make it for yamtiv and you drink from the You drink from the new beer. So while you're making it, you have no proof that you're making it for yamtiv. See, when you were setting up the, the strainer, while you were setting it up, you had to put in it the, uh, the, the, what's it called? You had to put in it right away. The pomegranates. But here by the beer, you're not proving at all that you're doing it for Yom Tif, And nevertheless, you were allowed to do it. He's asking why you're allowed to do it if you're not showing that you're doing it for Yom Tif. The Gemara says, Hasam le mucha milsa. Hacha mucha milsa. See, when someone's making beer, you can assume that he's doing it for the holiday. We don't know what he has, if he has in his back, uh, in the storage, he has other beer. So he's doing it, it's, uh, it's safe to assume that he's doing it for the holiday. But if someone's hanging up a strainer, he's probably hanging up a strainer to do straining. So therefore that, you have to show that you're not doing it for that. That's a different story. That doesn't look good. So you have to put the pomegranates in it first. And then afterwards, you take them out, and then you can do the straight. Amr le Rabbanan le Ravashi, the student said to Ravashi, Chazimar haitzov me Rabbanan. Take a look at that student. Barapuna barchiyon shmei. It's a very interesting name. Chiyon. Um, his name is Rapuna barchiyon. Vamila Rapuna bar chalvan shmei. Um... And some say that his name was Rav Hunan Bar Chalvan. The Shakal Bara de Tuma took a, uh, I guess, a clove, a, a piece of garlic, and he put it in a, um, a spout of a barrel. And the spout was made to let the, let the contents out. He puts it in there to stop it up. It looks like he's fixing the barrel. He's like, he want, he's, he's um, fixing the barrel, which is a problem on Shabbos. I'm intending just to keep it there. I'm just putting it in a, in a safe place. You know, as if he wasn't doing it to fix the barrel. So I'm just putting it there just to keep it. Okay, that's the first thing that he did, which wasn't, uh, looks suspicious. The next thing is, he went to sleep on a boat. And I guess the person that was um, in charge of the boat it was a non-Jewish boat. The non-Jew took the boat across the river, the Sire Peri, and then he went off the boat and he went to watch his, uh, his fruits that were on the other side of the river. It wasn't, you're not allowed to go on a boat on, on Shabbos. Okay? Just like you're not allowed to swim, you're not allowed to go on a boat. So, 
I was just going to to lay down. Amalu, Arama Kamrit. So Ravashi responds, you're complaining that he did Harama. Harama Bidarabanani. This Harama is only a Nisid, the, the things that he was doing was only Nisid Darabanan. And it's a Harama, it's a trick, Ana Darabanan. It's over Mirabanan, Leosi Lamebala Khatila. We don't have a concern that he's going to do it outright. Usually Harama is also for things that you may end up, if you, if you can do it as a trick, you may end up doing it uh, straight out. But here, it's a harama ana derabanan, and because he's a yeshiva student, he's not going to end up, he's not going to end up doing it. Uh, I'll try it. Okay, let's leave it over here.